I made my weird Barbie Halloween costume with $4.50 worth of thrifted fabric, all in spending only $10 total. So keep watching if you want to learn how I made my dress and how I did this for so cheap. To the best of my ability, I'm always going to try and create my own costumes, thrift flip things, and spend as little as possible. So the first thing I came across were these two pillowcases that were 25 cents each. I knew it wasn't enough fabric, but I knew these colors were perfect, so I went ahead and snagged them. A week or so later, I was in Virginia and decided to stop by a thrift store there. At first, I found this pink 99 cent apron that I thought could help, but all of a sudden, I found this huge pink remnant fabric for $3. I could not believe I found something so perfect. So once I was back home, I dove into figuring this out. I was mainly going off the idea of using rectangular pieces of fabric to make the dress. So I started with that in mind, made some updates, and found a free pattern for puffy sleeves. Of course, I started with washing my fabric and then ironing it. I cut out the puffy sleeves first, followed by the rectangles for the body, and then the giant rectangles for the skirt portion. For the two rectangle pieces for the body, I tried using other clothing as a guide for creating the neck hole and also the curves of the arms. I unfortunately did not map out the neck hole large enough, so it was super tight to get over my head. You'll see how that worked out later. To make sure this is clear, this is how I cut out my pieces. The sleeves, what I will refer to as the body pieces, and then the skirt pieces. The pink remnant fabric was just a little transparent, so I decided to use the pink pillowcase as a lining for the body portion of the dress. For the lining, I just copied the pieces I made for the body already, so I had one fabric piece to match the front and one fabric piece to match the back. So to finally get started, I took my front body piece and the front lining piece, put them right sides together, and sewed along the neckline. I also did this with my back body piece and lining piece. Then I opened this up. The outside of the dress is on the left, the lining is on the right, and the right sides are facing up. Underneath, I have the seam allowance pushed to the right towards the lining. Then I top stitched just a couple millimeters to the right of the seam line. Here you can see, the left is the seam line from sewing the outside and lining pieces together, and then the seam on the right is the top stitch I just did on the lining. So here I have the back piece of the body, and from the outside of the dress you have this nice neckline with no seams, and then you have the lining on the inside. So now that I have the lining added to both the front and back body pieces, I'm going to lay these right side to right side. So on the left is the outside pieces of the dress, front and back, right sides together, and then the right is the front and back lining pieces, right sides together. So now we're sewing the shoulder pieces together. You can see here where I sewed along the outer shoulder pieces to the lining shoulder pieces. Then I sewed all the sides together as well, so four separate places, because you sew each side of the lining and then each side of the outside pieces. So now when I flip that back around with the right sides out, you can kind of get an idea of what we were doing here and what it looks like with the lining. This was my first time sewing lining in a top like this, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So now to start with the sleeves. So first I pinned each sleeve like this so I could sew along this line and turn the sleeve into, you know, like an actual sleeve. I also went ahead and finished the edges. Then going around the curve of the sleeve piece, starting an inch or two away from the seam line, I sewed two basting stitches all along the curve as you see here. Then you take one of those strings and pull to create this gathering. And you're basically trying to make this the size of the armhole on the body of the dress. I was doing my best to guess at this, and when you pin the sleeve to the armhole of the body, you can make changes then if you need to. So to attach the sleeve, you'll want it to be right sides together. So the easiest way to do that is to have your body pieces with the right side slash outside of the dress facing out, but this makes the right side of the sleeve touching the right side of the body piece. And then you'll pin all around. Here's the sleeve pinned on. So there are three layers you're sewing through because it's the body piece and the lining piece plus the sleeve. The sleeves aren't complete yet, but I knew I would probably need to shorten them, and I also knew I would probably need to shorten the actual skirt of the dress, so I decided to get the skirt of the dress added first, and then I could figure out alterations after. So on both of my rectangular skirt pieces, I needed to do the basting stitch gathering thing like I did on the sleeves. So along one long side of each rectangle piece, I sewed two basting stitches, and then just like the sleeves, I gathered those to make them roughly the same size as the bottom of the body piece. After I had them gathered to the size I wanted, I put them right sides together and sewed each side of the skirt piece. I also finished the edges of the seam allowance down the side as well. Attaching the skirt to the body is also like how I attach the sleeves, where I have the right sides together, I pinned all around, and then sewed to attach. To note, you want to make sure your seam allowance is longer than where your basting stitch is, so all of that is covered on the inside and it's not showing from the outside of the dress. Okay. 
like the rest of this video, this lighting is terrible. But there's nothing I can do about it. So this is what I accomplished yesterday. I can't believe I made this. So what I need to do right now, these sleeves are too long and then I'll shorten it a little bit. It's just a little too long. Why film a nice video when you can lean your phone against a oil diffuser instead of getting your tripod? So I put some pins in the sleeves and at the bottom of the dress to mark where I wanted to cut. I trimmed the sleeves and then I trimmed the bottom of the dress. For the sleeves, I added two rows of basting stitches on the edge so I could gather the end of the sleeves just a little to help add to the poofiness. The part of the sleeve that I cut off, I used to make the cuff that I would be adding to the edge of the sleeve. For the cuff, I measured around my arm where the sleeve hits to figure out what size I wanted the cuff to be. I think I added at least three inches to the length to make sure I didn't make the cuff too small for my upper arms. Also, don't forget to account for your seam allowance. Before doing any sewing, I press the cuff by folding it three times as you can see here. It's easier to have the pressing done first. Here's what the cuff looks like after being pressed. The edge of our sleeve will fit right in between here. Then to turn our cuff back into one piece, I put the right sides together and sewed, and I press the seams open. Right sides together, attach the cuff to the sleeve as shown here. After pinning, I sewed as close to that first press line as possible. And you want to make sure this covers your basting seams from the sleeve. So I just sewed all along that. And now when I flip that over, I've got all my iron lines here. So that goes like that. This covers the edge. So the outside of the dress will look like this. And then on the inside, I'm going to have to go through and hand sew this. The only other way to do it would have been to like sew along here. Well, can I stitch in the ditch maybe? Hmm, if I had planned ahead, I could have stitched in the ditch. Maybe I'll try to stitch in the ditch and if it catches it, great. And if it doesn't, then I'll hand sew whatever I can't. It might, it might fit. I'm gonna try. So meaning from the outside, I'll sew right in that line and hope that it's catching this <laughs> on the back side. Yeah, if I had planned that in, a, in advance, I could have, well, maybe I still can. Even though it's already ironed, I can move, kind of move that around to ensure that it's long enough to get caught on the side. That is what I'm gonna do. I think that's gonna work. I was able to adjust. You can kind of see the original iron line was right there. So it should cover as I stitch in the ditch. Yeah, that worked well. So that's from the outside. I was able to catch the whole inside by doing that. For the bottom of the dress, I did a rolled hem. So I pressed the bottom up and then rolled it one more time to cover the raw edge and press that, and then sewed all along. To add the funky colors and shapes, I ended up just cutting up random shapes from the pillowcase I had. I laid out the pieces first to come up with something I liked. I wasn't sure what was going to be the best for attaching these, sewing or buying some kind of fabric glue, but then I remembered I had this spray glue from another project. It was perfect. It says it can glue fabric, though as of right now, I cannot confirm what will happen if you tried to wash it. One of the other things I was hoping to find was some kind of petticoat or tool or something to go under the skirt like Weird Barbie has, but unfortunately, I never found anything like that. Sometimes that's just how it goes with thrifting. The other thing I needed to figure out was how to give the illusion of her neon snakeskin boots. I kept an eye out at the thrift store for either bright funky boots or neon leggings or tights or something, but what I ended up finding was this tank top for 99 cents with the yellow and that diamond pattern, and for 99 cents, I was very happy with this find. So I essentially cut it in half and made like legging leg warmers basically. I just kind of played around until I had something that worked. And I knew the top would be covered by the dress, so I didn't really finish the edges up there. I wore black tights that I already had and wore these over the tights. And then I just wore heeled black boots that I already had. I seriously considered bleaching my hair for this, but that's just more money to spend. And plus I knew I didn't actually want bleached hair in real life. So I accepted my natural hair color. When styling, I basically wet my hair and added a little bit of gel so I could blow dry my hair sticking straight up. I then teased my hair as much as I could, which helped the hair to stay sticking up and stay in place. And of course I set this with hairspray. Remember when I said I made the neck hole too small? Yeah, the only way to get the dress on was to literally pull and slide it over my face. 
So I had to put my dress on before doing anything else. I covered my face with a bag to not get anything on the dress. And then I didn't want to get any makeup or anything on my dress. So I also wore a trash bag to protect the dress. Back to the hair. For the colored streaks, I actually already had colored hair waxes from an old video where I tested out colored wax on my buzz cut. So I was able to use that for the colored streaks she had. Weird Barbie's makeup is very minimal outside of the drawings on her forehead. She kind of has dark smoky eyeliner going all around. So I used the darkest powdery eyeshadow I had to give that effect. I didn't own anything to use for the markings on Weird Barbie's face. If you already use fun eyeliner or cream eyeshadows or anything, you could probably use what you have. I had nothing, but luckily I was able to find blue and black liquid eyeliner at the Dollar Tree. And then they had literally one single pink crayon eyeliner. So to buy all three of those cost me about $4. So with the fabric, the eyeliners, and then I had to buy pink thread, I paid 10 bucks to put this costume together. Um, pretty sure this is the coolest thing I've ever made. I'm so, so happy with how this turned out. I can't believe the items I was able to find at a thrift store and for how cheap. And I literally can't believe I figured out how to make this dress. I also was on theme with my brother and sister-in-law who dressed up as Barbie and Ken. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Hi, Barbie. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this or found something helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Real Barbie. Weird Barbie. Two sisters. Two sisters. <laughs> oh, God. Three sisters.